On the 25th of April 2015, Nepal was hit by an earthquake measuring 7.8 on the Richter scale. The earthquake devastated rural villages and flattened whole neighborhoods in Kathmandu. Temples and monuments that stood for centuries collapsed. 9,000 people died, and around 2.8 million people lost their homes. Earthquakes don't kill. Buildings do. Earthquakes do not happen every day to educate us, which means that if you don't have previous experience, you think that, okay, because a building is standing, it's going to withstand an earthquake as well. But that's not true. When was this uh, school constructed? Ten years, ten years ago. Ten years. But according to local methods, we don't have yes, yes. no seismic codes. Oh, yes. This is important. Because seismic code is important. In, in low income countries, typically people build as they can. And then all of a sudden, a large earthquake happens, and it's, it has devastating effects. Professor Anastasios Sextos and his team at Bristol University are part of the Safer Nepal project, which works with local communities to ensure that the devastation caused by the 2015 earthquake never happens again. They use their expertise in seismic engineering to make not just new, but also existing structures more safe. Yeah, small down because what is important is the beat and the color. In developing countries, typically the quality of the materials is low. People, you know, they just have to cope with their life. They don't follow seismic codes. They don't, they, they can't. They can't afford or they, there's no framework to do so. Seismic codes are a set of criteria needed to calculate and design structures so they remain stable during an earthquake. Where they've not been followed, Professor Sextos is able to advise communities whether their buildings are safe to use. Yeah, but the main elements like those columns yes. are reasonable yeah, because yeah, yeah. of yeah, exactly. yeah, but that's, that's minor. minor. This is you can call you can repair. The work of Professor Sextos focuses on where he feels it will have the most impact. Schools is where the next generation is being educated kids spend an enormous amount of time uh, in these buildings. It's almost half of the day. And this is, I think, the number one priority to be um, resilient. As well as assessing for post-quake stability, the team work with local experts to test the value of retrofitting buildings to prepare for future earthquakes. We set up a large um, campaign of experiments in Nepal with the Institute of uh, Structural Engineering and um, National Technology to make sure that we have good understanding about the properties of the materials that are used in Nepal. It doesn't really take a very heavy intervention to prevent collapse of a building. Professor Sextos's colleague, Dr. Nicholas Alexander, is assisting with the experiments. It's very important when we construct a wall that we construct it using local materials and local artisanship. So this can't really be done effectively in the UK. They have to be done in situ in Nepal. The key research question is how much variability is there in the capacity of this wall? So we don't necessarily build structures that are perfect. Probably this would make a very boring experiment. We know it's going to resist the earthquake. We are trying to reproduce the local vulnerabilities that we observe around the world and then test them, see them fail, and then test them again with a retrofit solution and see how effective uh, this is. From their findings, an app was designed to help engineers in Nepal identify weak spots and implement retrofitting solutions to help increase earthquake resilience. The Safer Nepal project also wants to build resilience into new structures. This means understanding vulnerabilities of local buildings and construction methods. 
There seems to be a lot of stone used to construct these Nepalese buildings. So it's quite common in the rural, rural regions um, of Nepal to use uh, stone masonry. We have to realize that masonry in any type, it's not that much about the stone or the bricks, it's mainly about the mortar. There is a need for workmanship, the corners to be tied properly, and you need somehow to have a diaphragm action so that the, the walls won't fall out of plane and the roof is going to fall on, on top of the residents or the students. Back in the UK, the seismic engineers are able to lay their hands on some state-of-the-art equipment to really stress test the Nepalese building techniques. Let us try to create a controlled platform that we can shake mechanically to reproduce the movement of the ground in case of an earthquake. So these are the accelerometers measuring the accelerations in Z and Y direction. And these are the displacement markers over here that actually are tracked by five cameras and measure the displacement of the specimen in X, Y and Z direction. Bristol University's shake table is one of only a few in the world and has allowed Professor Sextos to develop new technology that he hopes will make a difference in Nepal. All over the world during the last 20 years, there has been um, some effort to try to separate the building from the ground that is moving. And that is made in, uh, let's say, in higher income countries through a technology that is called seismic isolation with devices that are smart, uh, lead rubber bearings or sliding bearings and other quite expensive equipment. Building with this sort of design are world renowned for being earthquake proof, but the technology and construction methods are really expensive. Was it possible to find a cost-effective way to achieve the same result? So we thought that probably we can decouple the structure from the ground in a natural way. So the idea is, can we try to lay something in between the foundation and the ground so that when the earthquake becomes stronger, then there is this fuse of sliding, it starts sliding. So the ground is moving, but the structure remains intact. We used um, soil that was mixed with chopped rubbers that nobody needs, and we tried to see if this mixture would perform well. It performed quite well, but it, because it's soft, it was tilting a little bit. So we said, let us, let us improve it somehow. And this is why exper large-scale experiments are needed. After a number of trials, a workable solution was found. This is a low-cost technique that involves um, kind of a sandwich, as we aim to call it, two PVC layers and in between, a quantity of sand. So it's like little bubbles on which the building can slide in a controlled way beyond a magnitude of an earthquake. The design begins by creating a solid leveled base. On top of this, the isolation system is created, consisting of a thin layer of sand sandwiched between two layers of PVC. A concrete slab is cast onto the upper PVC layer on which the masonry building is constructed. When an earthquake occurs, the sandwich layer effectively decouples the structure from the shaking ground, activating a sliding behaviour that keeps the building intact. The solution sounds fantastic, but will people in Nepal be able to incorporate it into their building practices? The, the challenge, of course, when we suggest such solutions is to produce something that is not only meaningful scientifically and low cost, it has to be technically feasible, culturally acceptable, locally resourced. So to design a resilient system, you have to effectively co-produce it with a local community. You cannot just jump from Mars and try to implement a solution that you have developed in the lab. One new school with this design is currently in the pipeline and Professor Sextos is optimistic that it will be taken up locally in Nepal. The technology to build resilient schools overall is now settled. It is something that we know how we can build structures that can withstand the earthquakes as we expect them probabilistically. The problem is, do we have the money to build structures like that? Because this is, I think, the missed 
link in the chain of seismic safety implementation. On paper, everything is perfect. The engineering solution is there to protect lives. Implementation is the key. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell button below for notifications.